this week, taking a break from sci-fi and doing a little fantasy build. Thought I would make a little blacksmith type forge thing and start over with a foam core template and a large base which I beveled the edge of. I started out with a four walled structure and then using a mini I marked the right height for the doors and I wanted a double door sticking out the front and a small little door to the side and a few windows as well. So using a steel rule I marked those out and then cut them out with a knife. With all the pieces cut out I then glued it together and attached it to the base using hot glue. Using blue styrofoam and balsa wood, I will then go around and build up the walls. So using stone bricks down below and then balsa wood on top of that add some planking leading to the roof, as well as a side structure covering the actual forge. For the doorways I also trimmed some balsa wood down and used it to line the edges, so you wouldn't get any foam core showing through. For the brickwork I started cutting strips of styrofoam and tried to keep them reasonably thin. Then while they were still on the strip I used a tinfoil board to roll a stone texture into them. This then got sliced up into small rectangles, varying the height on a few of them so you could have some kind of square bricks as well as some rectangular ones. And once trimmed out I went in with the tinfoil ball again and rounded the corners. I then laid these bricks around the outside of the building and around the door frames and alternated them so you get some more natural looking brickwork. I also took the chance to build the forge itself, sticking out the side of the building, again just using styrofoam bricks but with a few longer pieces to build up the base of the forge. With the roof section above the brickwork I took some balsa wood strips and then using a knife to mark the angle, trimmed them down to size and glued them up. I also warped the planks a bit by trimming the edges using a knife. I wanted the forge to have a roof covering as well, but of a simpler type, so to start with I trimmed two balsa wood beams down and glued them down about where I wanted the roof to extend to. It's also around here that I cut out the entire front of the forge 
so it looked a bit less like a bread oven. I then cut the top of the supports at an angle and glued two beams down to mark the end of the roof. With a sharp knife, I then trimmed a hole out of the forge and attached a beam, poking into the hole and then linking up with the end of the roof. I was concerned that this might not be strong enough, but I gave it a good poke and it seemed stable enough to continue. Using a few pieces of off-cut styrofoam, I put some flagstones down around the base as well as at the bottom of the forge to make a little platform. Then using some strips of balsa wood, I made a little fence to run along the side of the forge. I then glued this in place to make the forge a little sealed off area and moved on to the basing stage. And to start with I mixed up a batch of sculptor mold and then slathered it onto the base. This was to bring the ground level up a little as well as add some uneven texture onto the ground. While that was wet I also expanded the forge area with a bit more planking for the floor. I wanted to try something new with the brickwork, so I mixed up some watery plaster and added some fine sand to the mixture. And the idea was I could put this on the brickwork, it would fill the gaps in between the stones and create a nice finish on it. And I don't think this turned out super well, but it was still interesting to try. I brushed it over the stonework and got it to kind of dip into the recesses between the stones. But unfortunately I think this did obscure a fair bit of the stone texture from the tinfoil ball rubbing. And I don't know if it's one that I'll do again in the future. Also make sure if you are working with plaster that you wear a mask when you're doing so. You don't really want to inhale any of the particles. Especially at this stage. So here it was partly dry and I went in again with a brush and tried to get as much of it off the front of the stones as I could. While all that finished drying I moved on to the roof and I had two bits of foam core trimmed to the right size so I could use them as a template and for the tiles themselves I just cut some strips of cardboard using a pair of scissors to trim along the edge and make tiles. These are easier to do in long strips, but I then cut them down to size to get some variation. And the smaller you go with the individual tiles, the better it will look, but it will also take a lot longer to do. Using hot glue, I fixed the template pattern in shape, and then started gluing the tiles onto the sides with a bit of an overhang on each end. And for the chimney of the forge, I had a few individual tiles which I could use to stack around it and blend it into the rest of the roof. For the peak of the roof I used some double length tiles, trimmed them all individually and then bending them with my fingers glued them so they're connected with both sides. With the sculptor more dry, I mixed up the usual basing paste and applied it onto the ground, as well as pushing it into any of the corners just to blend it into the base of the building. I 
I also went partly over the interior with this paste, just to give the impression that there was an interior without it being fully fleshed out. And while that was drying, I pushed some small aquarium rocks into the base as well. Moving on to the painting, I gave everything a unifying layer of black gesso to act as a sealer and a primer for the paint. Moving on to the doors, I made some balsa wood rectangles and trimmed them down to size before pushing a grain texture in using the edge of a blunt sculpting tool. Then trimming some cross beams, attach them with super glue. And to add a bit of extra detail, I thought it would be fun to have some rivets. So using a pin vise, I drilled holes through the back of the support beams and the front of the planks. Then using a cocktail stick, pushed it through so it fits snug, and then trimmed off both ends. And it's worth holding both ends at this point, else one end will fly off into oblivion. But if you trim them both flush to the end of the planks, you get a neat little river that should actually help to hold it together. Moving back to the painting, I gave everything a coating of a medium brown acrylic paint and then gave the dirt a highlight by mixing the same paint together with some white and giving it a highlight on the ground. The same highlight was used on the wooden beams just to pick out some of the wood grain as well as on the roof tiles. Still trying to find the best way to paint the roof tiles, but it'll do for now. For the brickwork, painted a grey colour over most of the bricks. And then picked out some bricks with a black, and some going over with another layer of the brown paint again. And then that will give some variation later on when it gets dry brushed. Also used the grey paint to give a bit of a highlight onto the roof tiles, just so they had a kind of dulled down motley appearance. And carefully picking out a few of the stones to go as different colours. The stone look was then blended together using a white dry brush. It's here that you can really see where the styrofoam lost a bit of the texture to the plaster and maybe it's not worth doing that step in the future. You can also hit it with a dark wash and another dry brush if it's not quite blended yet. Just make sure you give everything time to dry between the various washes and dry brushes. With most of the painting done, I moved on to the side roof and glued some coffee stirrers to act as guidelines for the rest of the beams. I wanted the side roof to look a bit more ramshackle, so I cut the beams at different lengths and made sure there were some gaps between them so it looked a bit more dilapidated before blending it into the rest of the woodwork. Using a watered down green paint I then weathered the wood and the stonework and to give it a bit more character. Using some matte Mod Podge I then dabbed various blobs around the outside where I would apply some static grass. I used a mid-green static grass for this, approximately 2mm, and applied it onto the Mod Podge patches, making sure I didn't electrocute myself, which is too easy to do. I also used a double folded piece of foam core underneath the build so I could just bend it in two and pour the static grass back into the capsule. While that dried I made a few little accessory pieces out of styrofoam and balsa wood, just carving them up with a knife. So we have a little anvil and a cooling bucket. And I didn't end up using the rack in the end, so that will be used somewhere else. I mixed up some foliage paste using some foam as well as some regular basing flock. 
and mix that together with some Mod Podge before applying it onto the walls of the piece. It should be a nice slimy consistency when it's ready to apply. And using a sculpting tool, you should be able to push it into the crevices between the bricks. And a lot of this for me was to cover up the lack of texture, which I lost from the plaster. So I probably put a bit more on than I normally would. It's also very good for covering up any mistakes, such as any large gaps in the roof tiles where you can see the white underneath them. I attach the doors using super glue and connecting them with the existing beams that line the outside of the door frames. Using super glue on styrofoam is always a bit risky, but as long as you primed it and painted it, it should be fine. But I did try to get most of the contact point on the balsa wood instead of the styrofoam bricks. Adding a few extra details, I got my leaf hole punches out and made some more autumnal leaves. Then applied them liberally around the piece using Mod Podge to connect them. Again, these are great for covering up any little holes or gaps in the model, which you can also use tuft for. So getting a variety of foliage and applying that onto the base. I also thought it needed a bit more fencing so I made some fencing that was even more dilapidated, as well as a sign, which I carved some writing in using a sculpting tool. Looking at the foliage paste, now that it was dry, I felt it was a little bit too bright, so using a very watered down black paint, just gave it a quick wash, just to bring the colour down a bit and bump up the contrast. signpost also lost a lot of clarity so I went in with some white paint and traced over the writing again. This was then glued over the side door where I realized the stonework made no sense as the stone would just fall into the door frame. But that is done. And there's a few things that I would definitely do differently next time but it's a nice little building and it'll fit in with my current ones and it'll look nice in a game of Rangers of Shadows Deep or something. Also the roof is still removable, so if I need to I can use the interior. And it fits in with little 28mm figures. You can also hide people inside. But thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you next week where I'll be back on something post-apocalyptic.